So part number two, we have the bearing, right? It's much more complex than the last part that we did. All right, but we need to start off by getting this shape through here laid out. All right, so we're going to go over to Inventor. We'll do the new part. We'll start 2D sketch, and I'm going to pick the top view for this, right? And you'll notice that this, oops, this consists of, if we're trying to do this flange, right, circle, big circle, small circle. All right, so we'll go back to here. We will do our big circle, and if we look, that is two and a half, two and a half. All right, so 2.5, enter. There's my two and a half circle. And then while, before I put my other two circles in, I'm going to lay a vertical line. And I'm going to lay down another vertical line. And then I'm going to say, hey, those two lines are equal in length. So this one is equal to this one. All right? And then I can totally go ahead and select these two. I held down the control key so I can pick both of those. And then I will say construction. All right? Not required, but it keeps your, your drawings nice and clean. And then now pick the end points of those lines for my, for my part. Now if we go back over here and look... These are a radius of three quarters. So that for a diameter, that three quarter radius is going to be double. So that will be 1.5. So then we'll lay it onto our other side. All right. And I'm just going to lay that down without a dimension. And then I'm just going to say those two are equal. That way, if I change the one, it's always going to change the other. And then I'm going to throw in my dimension, right? This is three and a half from one side to the other dimension circle to circle 3.5 okay and then notice that yes that is from center of the circles to center of the circles all right so that's got the flat plate except for these lines all right so we need to drop those lines into place so if i click and drag all right, it's going to take a line now it works a little bit easier you will get less confused if you just put your lines and all I'm doing is dropping it down and then hitting escape and getting out of it all right but don't don't attach them to anything we want to do it just makes it a little easier on you we're going to hit tangent and we're going to say tangent from here to here all right and this is where it gets a little boring tangent tangent again so I'm going to go all the way through here and apply the tangent constraint to everything right because that is what we want I misclicked. I want to click that one and then that one. And so now I just need to start trimming things away. Now when I trim this, right, I am going to break the relationship that exists here with this 2.5. And so it's going to lose, you notice it's all black, it's all defined right now, it's going to lose that, oops, um, it's going to lose that relationship. Uh, but we can very quickly put it back. All right, so I'm just going in. I'm trimming everything. And then trim this, trim this, trim this. All right, and you'll notice there's the point that I lost that dimension. So just put that dimension back, right? We lost that 2.5. Now, and it's because it went from a diameter to a radius, right? And so now this is not 2.5, it's 1.25 now. And that's because it is a radius. And so we put that in there. Notice that that gets constrained, but we need to say equal, and that side is equal to that side. And then it all turns black again, fully constrained. Finish the sketch. And we shall extrude it, I don't know how tall, half an inch. So it's half an inch tall. So extrude 0.5. And then so now I have my plate. All right, so now if I go back to my part, I'm going to add in the cylinder portion that is an overall two inches high uh, from the bottom. So go back to my part. Now, you can totally you can totally add it here, right? And go it up inch and a half because we know this is half inch thick. But the intention, right? The design intent as laid out by uh, whoever did this drawing is they want two inches from the bottom of that um, bearing, right? So I'm going to make 
um, the sketch on the bottom so I can go up two inches okay and that's just um, that's just a um, a way to keep the design intent of whoever designed this. I'm going to go and I'm going to lay in a circle and I'm not going to put a dimension on it because what I'm going to do is I'm going to say equals this is equal to this arc right turns black finish the sketch and then I can extrude right and I want to change my direction because it's going the wrong way I don't want to cut right I'm going to extrude two inches all right and that will totally get that part uh, as the designer intended all right so now if we go back to here we have a hole through the middle um, and then we have a counter bore there too so I'm going to do those uh, as two separate things so we have an inch and a half hole and then we've got a two inch hole all right so I'm going to go back here we'll drop in a sketch do my circle we said that was an inch and a half inch 1.5 1.5 finish the sketch, extrude it. We are going to cut this time and we're going to say through all. So cut all the way through because it goes all the way through. That one is in place. All right, now we're going to do another sketch, circle. This one is two inches. So we'll, we'll just type two, enter. Finish the sketch. And this is going to be a quarter inch deep extrude All right we want to cut we want to cut 0.25 and then so now I have my quarter inch deep then what we need to put in in the, is these two holes all right and so we're going to use the hole command for that it is currently 3 8 with a 5 8 counter bore right and the counter bore is 1 8 of an inch deep so we're going to pop back over all right, so when we do um, when we do a hole, it wants a point. All right, so we're going to make a new sketch, right, and we're going to hit a point. And if we go over here, we'll notice all these circles are concentric, so they're all around the same point. So I go in here, activate when that turns highlights, it gives me the center point of that hole. So I'm going to drop a point in there. Same thing here, hover over it, it activates, that finds me the center point. Click on the center point. All right, from there, I've got that sketch done. All it wants is points, all right? So that's all I gave it. It was two points. I click on the hole, right? And it puts in what it, you know, just a random hole. Now we need to pick the correct one, all right? So we have a clearance hole, right? We're going and we need to pick three eighths, right? Because uh, we're going to put a hex head bolt in there um, or something. Right, so that gives us a 3 8 inch clearance. All right, so their bolt will go through that. However, uh, the counter bore is deeper than we want because we only want a 1 8 inch counter bore. So we're going to come back here and say 0.125, that's 1 8. All right, or we can totally do 1 slash 8. Right, that totally works here. And make sure that the termination is through all, so it goes all the way through, and then that pop that in. And so now we have uh, the correct size. Let's go back and check, because we're doing a little bit of a non-standard thing here. Let's go back and check. Oops, not the sketch. Right, right click, edit feature. Right, and let's see how big that hole is. So that's 0.875. And the counter bore is supposed to be 5 eighths. So let's go ahead and put five slash eight because um, it's a little bit non-standard hole that we're doing there and there we go all right so now we have the three eighths all the way through and we have the counter bore there all right. Though now that I'm thinking about it, when we set this up, we're doing a clearance hole, right? Um, edit feature. 
All right, so we're doing a clearance hole for that. So this is actually going to be a little bit bigger uh, because it's doing a clearance hole. That is not what our drawing callout is, and I'm sorry that I've confused you, right? But it's saying, hey, this is 3 eighths inch in diameter, All right? So I'm going to go down here, override this, right? So this is designed to take a bolt that's 3 eighths inch wide and give it a little extra room so it'll fit through the hole. That is not what our drawing callout is saying. It's saying make this 0.375. So I'm going to make that as the drawing calls out, as you should. So I'm going to make that 0.375. So my assumption is we're putting something through here that is smaller than 3 eighths. Okay, so now we are super close to being done. All right, the only thing we have left is this hole. There's an inch and a quarter up from the the top and it is 3 eighths inch in diameter so from there right notice our top view we only have two uh, hidden lines here and not on the other side and so that what that tells us is this hole is only on one side okay it's on the left side here but ultimately it doesn't matter you could totally rotate this 180 degrees or if you put the hole on the other side uh, and then you can just rotate it back right so it doesn't really matter which hole which side the hole is we'll put it on the left just to be consistent with the drawing um, so let's go back to our inventor okay now this one's a little bit tricky okay because it's where do I where can I draw my circle for my hole to cut through and the answer to that is we'll go back to the origin and pick one of our construction planes specifically the XY plane here right and it will depend on find the one that's going in the correct direction for you right it depends on which one you started with so I'm going to do that I'm going to start a 2d sketch right and I'm going to lay in a line from the origin and go up right and I'm going to make that a construction line and then I'm going to say circle from that end of that line now notice that those disappear right and that is simply because they're currently sitting on the inside here right um, and then we can say that is supposed to be 3 8 or 0.375 and it should be right um so here's the thing right it's kind of annoying it is kind of annoying to not be able to see that so what we can do is we can left click the sketch and say slice graphics and it will totally slice it there so you can see what you're sketching you can also see through the part as if it was uh, a section view All right and so we're going to go here we go back to our drawing it should be one and a quarter up 1.25 and that is done finish the sketch once we're out of the sketch it goes out of that view uh, we can totally say extrude all right and we're going to cut and we are going to do through all and we hit okay and then now we have that bearing block done all right we need to save it we need to save it as bearing all right so hit the save key notice that i am saving this in flat pack table all right so that is in for me right it is in my documents inventor flat back table all right that is where i want it we're going to call it because that's where i'm saving everything else all right i'm going to call this bearing b-a-r-r-i-n-g i don't want it to be all caps and hit save all right so that is part number two complete